Welcome to Teen YPWW Lesson 3. I do not own the rights to this music. Today's topic is the definition of power part 3. The lesson text is coming out of Ephesians chapter 1 verses 17 through 20, John chapter 10 verses 1 through 10, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 15 through 24. The memory verse is Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. I will read the King James Version first, and then the New International Version. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. The New International Version. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. The key for today's lesson, wisdom builder, what is power? The focus for today's lesson, introduction to our series on God's unlimited power. Let's discuss a few other power structures found in the word of God. First and foremost is the power of God, which is amazing and supersedes all other powers that we will discuss. Then there is the power of Satan along with evil institutions. Throughout the word of God, we see the rise and fall of plans of Satan to stop the will of God in the earth. Our first observation in the Bible of this cyclic pattern is in the third chapter of Genesis. The conversation between Eve and the serpent began what Bible scholars call the fall of man. In this case, the evil plans of Satan prevailed, but not to the ultimate end he expected. Yes, Adam sinned and lost the benefits that he and Eve enjoyed in the Garden of Eden. However, Adam didn't lose everything. God had a plan of redemption to save Adam and all of mankind thereafter. What is that plan of redemption, teen listeners? Our answer to every evil attack against our lives is, God has a plan to protect me and redeem whatever I lost. God is all-powerful. Yes, Satan has power, but he and his demonic entities are not all-powerful. All For every demonic attack or evil plot planned to hurt the believer, God has a counteractive plan of redemption. Throughout the word of God, this fundamental fact of faith is demonstrated. Our memory verse speaks to the believer's eyes and heart being enlightened. This means that your knowledge and understanding of the fundamentals of our faith can increase progressively. Understanding that God always wins in the end is a very important faith fact. Jesus explained this concept in John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Satan, the thief examines your life, dreams, visions, and plans. Then he plans how to derail, destroy, hinder, and discourage you. He assigns members of his demonic team to derail you, and get you off course. His power, though limited, is effective. In this kill, steal, and destroy directive, the counteractive plan of this evil plot is the power of God that can be ancient, can be fitted for your very situation. Jesus came that we might live a full and victorious life. Another important fundamental part for you, teen listeners, to win against the wilds of the devil is for you to be saved. Your salvation and walk with the Lord are very important. It is the pathway on which you are strengthened in the faith and learn the voice of Jesus. In this same 10th chapter of John, Jesus declared this truth. In some precarious cases, we will only have his voice to lead us through the challenging plots of Satan against our lives. As you mature in Christ, you learn his voice and his ways. 
dark societies recruit teens around the world to join their satanic organizations. They worship Satan and declare him Lord of their lives. Some of these satanic groups are very docile and unassuming, while other groups are flamboyant and very obvious. Our advice to you, teen listeners, is to never go to an event or gathering sponsored by a satanic group, even if it seems unthreatening and okay. If it is a book review or an ice cream social being sponsored at your school by a satanic dark group, don't go. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23 advises us to abstain from all appearance of evil, thereby allowing God of peace to sanctify us wholly. This means we should not participate in any increment of activity that can be traced back to an ungodly source. Romans chapter 14, verse 16 says, Let not your good be evil spoken of. It is a great idea to go to the carnival to have fun riding the rides and playing wholesome games, but it is not a good idea to stop at the fortune teller's booth at the carnival to get your palm read. Some people say it's only harmless fun. This same type of thinking motivates a person to rush to tear open a fortune cookie to read the message inside or read their astrology forecast every day. These types of activities seem small, harmless, or insignificant. However, they are not. The Word of God gives us a stern warning against engaging in such activities. God is all-powerful. Yes, Satan has power, but he does not have all power. There are many biblical events that demonstrate the power of God, superseding the power of Satan. These biblical events should encourage us in our faith. The agenda of Satan is to steal, kill, and destroy the life and plans of believers. Our belief should always be that God always has a plan to protect and save us from wiles of the devil. Teens should never attend any gathering of dark societies. The questions for today's lesson. Number one, why is it important for us to discuss the power of Satan even though we know that God's power is greater? Number two, some dark societies sponsor fun events for teens. Why should you never attend these types of events? The end. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.